All right, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner.tv. This is going to go on my fluff tube, hopefully. You still have your channel on there, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm with San Joaquin Valley. San Joaquin Valley, where they audit the police. I think this is very important This in this day and age. David Villa, man, mi tocayo. What's going on, brother? Good, bro. Good to see you. Good to see you, too, man. Yeah, so... Are you so how's it going? It's been a while. I know you got you were like, whoa, dude, why'd you take the video down? I took the video down because I purged my my videos on, on fluff tube just to stay safe. So I was like, you know what? I gotta I gotta we gotta do another video. We gotta do another one because uh I, I take all the other all the old stuff down. So word. just to save my channel, you know what I mean? Where we're yeah, makes sense. So man, are you uh so you're still at it? You're still going strong? Are you still auditing the police? Yeah, I, I uh most mostly now I share videos, <clears throat> excuse me. I share videos for a lot of other people who are just starting out. I try to help their channels grow. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm dealing with GERD. So my throat's a little jacked up. Um, so I help most, mostly now I, I share videos and I help other channels grow. I try to get them, you know, up and going. Um, but for the most part, I still go out in my area. I go record police. I try to do it respectfully. Um, I try to talk to them or I try to just maybe just observe. I try not to get involved or try to interfere in any kind of way. Um, I don't try to step on anyone's toes or anything like that while they're out there doing their job. Um, but I just try to record and document uh, oftentimes, especially in my area, police now know not to mess with me or or bother with me. Um, they did create a card specifically because of me where on one side of the card, it shows First Amendment audits and uh, how to deal with First Amendment auditors. And on the other side, it actually shows them the First Amendment of the Constitution. So that card that the uh, city manager and city uh, attorney drew up, they give it to every cop now, just in case they stumble upon me, who's out there recording. And uh, I think, that's, that's, yeah, I think that's important because um, you know, many years ago when I started, I seen a news segment that said that Kern County was the deadliest county for police justified killings. And I wanted to go out and record and I wanted cops to feel that um, somebody's out there recording and documenting, you know, the interactions. Even if I'm not there, I wanted them to think like someone's there and stuff. So, so you're policing like, the police. Policing the police. That's right. Wow, bro. So this has caught fire, man, to the point that they had to distribute cards to the police on how yeah. to deal with you? Yeah. What? Are yeah. you serious? <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, recently, uh, I hired a an ex-cop from my area, and uh, she actually, I, I kind of cussed her out a long time ago, and uh, but she's no longer a cop, and she's writing a book, and the book is called Crooked Blue Line, and uh, she's an ex-cop and she just, in her book, she talks a lot about um, what she's had to deal with, the, the culture of policing, you know, the nature of it. And, you know, you kind of have to join a special club. And if you're not in this club, you know, you're, you're pretty, they're going to find a way to kick you out. And a lot of people say sometimes in our comments, like, well, if you want to change things, why don't you just become a cop? You know, seek so to change things from the inside. But I think that sounds like a good idea, but I don't think that's exactly how it works, you know? So I I've seen, I've seen some of uh, Chili Castro's videos, your videos, um, both have, you both have very different approaches. That's all I'm just going to leave it at. Um, right. I, 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 you know, Chili's more, uh, almost like, <laughs> and I'm not talking bad. I, I like Chili. He's just, but it's very confrontational. Okay. With these cops. I feel like you kind of, you don't step over that line too much. You're more respectful, right? You're more, you both have different methods in going about this. I've I've noticed your method is more. I've noticed you're more respectful to the cops. You don't really try to get in the way of their, of their, uh, you know, a, a traffic stop or with or their or their due process. Right? I mean, you're more. You're not confrontational. Like Chili's a little different. Right. I, right? I uh, and and I'm known to you know have mild interactions. Not every cop watch that I do gets hundreds of thousands of views because. I'm not really, you know, trying to drop F-bombs to them just for the hell of it. There have been videos where cops try to violate my rights or come at me really aggressive. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of lose it sometimes. And I, you know, kind of go, you know, what I like to call going ham on the bacon. Um, sometimes <laughs> if, they, <laughs> if they get aggressive with me, then I kind of let them know that I'm not afraid. Um, and I beat two charges out here in my area, two arrests for, you know, just recording them and just, 
you know, arresting me unlawfully. I've already beat two charges. Um, so it's kind of, I, I try to make it more educational. I want to, you know, get to know the cops in my area. I want the people to watch the videos and get to know them. Um, they're one of the things that I've noticed a lot and I've been recording some of these things is cops out here in my area. They like to, you know, turn with no signal lights, uh, speed without emergencies, um, run red lights, just do everything that they ticket people for. And, uh, I just, there was one time where I went to the mayor's office and I asked to speak to the mayor. She wasn't there. So I left a note with the secretary letting the mayor know. And I gave the mayor my, um, my email address. And I basically had to write it down that I've been catching police, you know, driving without emergency lights fast. Um, just different things that, you know, infractions that they ticket people for. And I told her that day that, um, that I believe that cops are going to, and just a few days after I did, I I, I left that note, um, a cop ran a stop sign. Wow. And uh, I did find the mayor at a private meeting, uh, a private party actually, right during work hours. And I and I asked the mayor about it. And this is, that's a sh that short video is on my channel. And I told her, I was like, look, I left you a note and you didn't do anything about it. This could be an easy fix. Talk to the chief of police. And, uh, and and make these cops follow the same traffic laws that we have to. Now, I understand if a cop is chasing a criminal or something like that, they have to break traffic infractions, tra break traffic laws, but um, nothing is being done about it. Still to this very day, we see cops hauling ass, and uh, just, you know, doing, like I said, doing the same thing that they ticket people for. So, so like, what's the average age of a cop anyway, man? Like, what age do they usually get into the force? Is it like 21 to like 25 is the average age of a cop? Or is it 21 to 30, 35? What is the average age? I they feel like you're old to be a police officer if you're over 30. So. Right. I think they try to get them young, um, fresh out of high school even. Uh, nowadays, you know, from, you know, from California to New York and everywhere in between, it's kind of hard to hire cops. Nobody, I don't want to say nobody wants to become a cop anymore, but now they have to give incentives for cops to, to become cop people to become cops. They they're offering money, you know, sign on bonuses and stuff like that. And why, why do you think this is? Um, I think it's just the nature of policing itself. I think, uh, that they're so hated. I mean, they've got a bad rap. Yeah. You know, one of the comments we get a lot is police earn the hate, you know, and, and I guess, you know, throughout, the years of showing these videos, we expect cops to do a good job and treat people. It's actually in their policy to be respectful and to be um, professional at all times, but you don't see that often. You know, sometimes you do and cops, you know, they have a tough job. And I, I personally think that um, detectives have a tough job going after criminals, people that actually have committed crimes and have committed, um, uh, created uh, victims. And so, um, Cops, a lot of times now we just see them kind of uh, just like you said it before, uh, looking like glorified bouncers um, and, you know, just going out and trying to generate revenue for the state and being very disrespectful. You, on one traffic stop, you'll see three or four cop cars now, you know, and just very aggressive towards people pulling guns. Like it's out an people. adrenaline rush for them to like put someone in jail, like yeah. they get off on that. Yeah, actually, the second video that I sent you, it was a traffic stop and the guy got out of his car, his truck and the cop actually. Um, and that's kind of what we're seeing, you know, aggressive be behavior. And it's just a, it's a dangerous world, I believe, that that it's becoming. And one of the things that I've uncovered since I started doing my channel is I one of the reasons why I try to bring a respectful approach is because I want to I want to understand their their thought process. And one of the things I started asking cops when I first started, and I've been doing it a long time, is I ask every cop that I encounter if they know the First Amendment of the Constitution, and they don't know it. Um, they don't know of, pretty much any of the any of the amendments of the Constitution. I know that for a fact because I know police, and I've asked them about that, and they don't know. They don't know? They don't know. No. They need to know and uphold the Constitution. That's right. Uh, there was a uh, a thing that I wrote down, and let me read it to you really quick. Uh and it's, um, how do I say this? So cops not knowing the oath they swear to is the equivalent to a construction worker not knowing how to use a measuring tape. 
an Uber driver not knowing how to use GPS, a seamstress not knowing how to use a sewing machine, a bartender not knowing how to mix drinks, a, cheat, a, a chef not knowing how to season food, a professional fighter not knowing how to grapple, a teacher not knowing how to read, a rock star not knowing how to sing, a meteorologist not knowing about atmospheric science, a dog groomer not knowing how to style a cut, a pilot not knowing physics or aerodynamics, a news anchor not knowing communications, a lifeguard who can't swim, a bodyguard with no size or muscles, and a food critic with, a food critic with no palate. How important is the cops knowing the oath that they swear to? It is that important. You know, it's like any kind of job that you get, not knowing how to do your job, you'd be out of there fast. And, um, and you know, that one of, that's one of the things I, I uncovered while asking cops these questions and talking to them is they don't know it. And, you know, even now I, I try to, you know, ask it in a different way. I, there's one channel who actually perfected that question. You know, first he'll ask a cop, like, you know, if I ask you a question and you didn't know the answer, you know, would you go out and try to find the answer, you know? And uh, cops will be like, yeah, yeah. And then he asks them, do you know the five uh, freedoms of the First Amendment? And uh, sometimes cops will be, they'll just shut down as well. So sometimes it doesn't matter if you ask them in an aggressive manner. So what, what, are these, what do these cards have on them if they if they come and encounter someone like you? What what are these? What are, Does it have the list of the amendments? What, what does this card have on it? Yeah, uh, it basically, it, it runs it down for them verbatim on what the First Amendment is. And at the very top, it tells them speech press and uh, religion and assembly and petition. So it's five, you know, five freedoms that, you know, uh, and I, and I say this all the time, uh, the first amendment, the constitution, the bill of rights, these documents were not written to give us our rights. We were born with natural rights. These amendments were written to limit the scope of authority that cops and government has over we, the people. And I think that this is one of the things that I think everybody whether you're left or right, you know, red or blue, you know, gay or straight, man or woman, uh, young or old, you know, pretty or ugly, we can all agree that we have natural rights and we need to know these natural rights. When you begin to know and understand what your natural rights are, you'll begin to know and understand what other people's rights are. So if you see somebody riding around in a tricycle with a tutu on, it's a full grown man with a beard, and it's weird, right? You don't like it. As long as he's not breaking any laws, as long as he's not doing anything to your kids, he's not doing anything bad, you know, illegal that's creating, a, a, it, it doesn't matter if you don't like it, it's, you'll begin to it's understand, right. yeah, leave him alone, it's his right to be weird if he wants, you know, yeah, so. Uh, I agree with that 100%, my thing is this, and I respect law enforcement, I do, so this is not, we're not bashing police here, right? but they need to be held accountable, they have to be held accountable, Sport, especially with that we're going into now in the world, as a, in our country, uh, you're either going to be upholding the Constitution or you're not. And this is going to be, this has to be enforced. And who's better to enforce it than we, the people? People like you. So I give Absolutely. you a lot of credit, Merrill. I give you so Thank much credit. I even get, I give you and Chili credit for what you guys are doing. You guys are doing different approaches to it, but I, I, I love you both for doing this. Um, Thank you. I guess I'm going to show some video right now of, 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 uh, of some of the, um, I guess, stops, right? The, uh, yeah, the, so the Go second video, I, yeah, the second video I sent you is of a traffic stop, and uh, you wanna, do you want to do this one first? Yeah, we can do this one first. The cop actually pulls this guy over. Give me a look. Can you hear it? Distance, yes. Oh, thanks, man. Just do your job. Uh, I'm, I'm, I need some distance. This is just me trying to have some safety here. That's cowardice, bro. That's on your way. It's cowardice, bro. In, Plain and simple, just cowardice. What you want, man. I, I gotta go home at the end of the day. You guys are reporting me. Coming in hot. I didn't give you no issues. You got you, you call in backup and they have to come in hot, risking people's lives because you're afraid of a camera. Unbelievable. You feel safe now? Really? You had to call all this for cameras? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What's up, Morales? You're not a coward like this guy, are you? Can some of you, can one of you guys give this guy a hug? What's up, Mr. Uh, Three Chevrons? Can you give this guy a hug? He called you guys out here because of cameras. Everybody came swooping in fast, risking the people. 
because this guy's a coward right here. I'm going to call it how it is, man. I treat you guys right, but he wants to act like a coward. We're going to call it out. So this is your channel, San Joaquin Transparency on YouTube, right? right. Yes. Wow, man. You, you're, this is... Oh, I'm going to keep playing it. Here we go. Uh. <laughs> In one mile, turn left onto West what Mission Street. Fuck? Okay, now. Um, Jeepers Creepers and shit. Beverly Hillbillies. So let me ask you one more thing. How many times a week do you go out looking for this stuff? You go out purposely looking for it, though, right? Yeah, um, I'll be and and this is something that I, you know, kind of do uh, different than other folks now is uh, I don't go out looking for it like I used to. Um, now, if I'm with the wife or I'm going to get coffee or, you know, going down the road or going to the store, if I see a traffic stop, then I'll have my wife pull over or I'll pull over and I'll get out and I'll record and I'll just walk up with my camera so I, you know, this is one of the things that I would like to say to the people. Um, we should be recording police. You know, we don't have, we can do it from a distance. We don't have to get up and cl close and personal or nothing. You know, it's it's an empowerment. If you're ever afraid of cops or, or whatever, if you ever want to feel empowered, this is a good way to get empowered, to go up, you know, record, start recording these interactions and uh, letting cops know that you're there to record. It could work both ways, man. It could work for the cop or it could work for the person. Um, you know, cops don't have to be afraid of the camera. They don't have to get upset. So I personally don't go out and uh, look for them all the time. Every once in a while, I will if I just in the mood to go out and record or something. But for the most part, I just go out about my day. And if I see a police interaction, I just start recording. And uh, that's what I recommend people to do. You don't have to go out of your way to do it. You can just do it if, you, if you're uh, going on about your day. So, so what are we looking at right here? You're following this truck that looks like so, it's, it's probably going to get pulled over. Yeah, we just ended up behind this truck. We're uh, we're down downtown San Jose, and uh, we're just we're behind. We ended up behind it. Uh, I, I'm gonna tell. I can see why they would pull them over. Right, <laughs> it's yeah, shit I, I totally see it. Right. Don't run into that mother. All right, guys, I'm going to explain exactly what's happening in this video. That truck that you just saw gets pulled over about two minutes after I recorded that video. We kind of seen it happening. We seen the lights come on and we went around the corner and parked. And so we decided to get off. By the time we got off, my son Nick and Nate both walked up kind of quick and they were able to capture this moment right here. The cop draws his weapon on the man because he said he was afraid that the man walked out of his truck. And next, what you guys are going to see is this Officer Perez from the San Jose Police Department. Officer Perez demands that we move away and get back. When I decided that I was back enough already, I kindly told him no thank you and for him to get back to work. He calls in backup, and what you guys are about to see is one of the biggest displays that I have ever seen of Officer Cowardice. And before you watch the video, I'll say this. For years now on my channel, I've been saying that officer safety is a form of cowardice and that public safety is heroism. And my words have never rang more true after seeing what happened in Uvalde, Texas, where the cops did not want to go into the school to save the kids. After this, we're going to go file a complaint at the police station. And folks, that is another video within itself. So without further ado, check this out. So he thought that he was, so he was in, a, he's already taking a stance. He knows you're recording him. So he's already saying, oh, I thought you were going to come out shooting. I caught that right now. Right, right, right.
distance, please. No thanks, man. Just do your job. No, I, I, I need some distance. Okay, I need some distance. That, that's all I'm asking. This I'm on a public sidewalk, man. Just do your job. I need some distance. You afraid the camera's gonna hurt you or what? No, no, I, I'm afraid. When you You're afraid. Hurt. I'm afraid. You're a you big ass hurt. chicken or what? I'm just afraid one of you might hurt. Why? Why are you such afraid to do your job? I'm not afraid to do. My you got job. a gun. I got a camera. Just do your job. I don't. I, I don't know what you guys got. Obviously, you guys got obviously, you're afraid. You you gladly admit that you're just afraid. Yeah. Officer safety is cowardice. We're just recording. Public safety is heroism. Why don't you just do your job? Sure. We're not going to hurt you. We got cameras. I'm trying. But I don't know if you guys You ain't got trying to do your job, man. You're trying to pout about. You don't, don't like the cameras right here, and that's what you, you just don't want to be recorded. We don't got guns or weapons there. How do we hurt you? With Everybody's got a weapon or what? You're the one with the weapon here. I know. I know. This is just me trying to have some safety here. That's cowardice, bro. It's cowardice, bro. I mean, plain and simple, just cowardice. What you want, man? I, I gotta go home at the end of the day. You guys were reporting me. Coming earlier. in. I didn't give you no issues. We haven't even said nothing to you. We were we were cordial. We were quiet. I just said, give me a little bit of distance. That's it. And I gave you some no, 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 yeah, and, and, and I can appreciate it, but you remember me telling you, like, I'd just rather you not next to the, be next to the phone? Brother, this has changed the game. This has changed the game. Having a cell phone, you know, being able to record these guys has absolutely changed the game. It has. It has. Everybody's a member of the press, man. Yeah. Like, over there by that tree. You know, the freedom of the press... Is uh part of the First Amendment. You don't need credentials. You Good don't need job. Look, you got backup now. Okay, yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, bro. Damn. You got you, you call in backup and they have to come in hot, risking people's lives because you're afraid of a camera. Unbelievable. Risking you guys, risking the people. No, I, I, it's okay that they're not here. It's okay that they're bored. I'm just, it's three of them, it's one of me. What's up? No, I haven't even, 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 Fucking coward, man. This is real, for real. You guys smash that thumbs up if you can. This guy's a coward. So why is he arresting him? Because... During the traffic stop, the guy got out of his vehicle and he had his hands up when he got out. And, the, I, you know, cops don't want people getting out of the vehicle. And I can see his point of view on that. Like, um, you know, you, you're in the driver's seat and you get pulled over and you hop out of the vehicle. I can see why a cop would be afraid of that. You know, um, could the guy had come out guns a blazing? Possibly so. Um, but the guy, had, he had his hands up. He got out of the truck and... Um, the cop, I guess he was afraid, so he put him in handcuffs, but they're going to let the guy go at the end, and the guy didn't do anything illegal, so, um, I mean, I, I can, you know, I try to look at this from both points of views, from our point of view, from the cop's point of view, um, yeah, the, the guy got out of his car during the driver's side, uh, during the traffic stop and it just it scared the cop i guess so he put him in handcuffs i mean i i can kind of see why the cop would be leery but i me personally i would look at that guy you, you got to be 
cautious in every situation, but you can see that they you were very threatening to him being there recording. That right. that is obvious. He was he was he was very much aware of you guys, and he started. Now I'm asking the question: What would he have done if you were not there? That's 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 He's a, watching a his bigger P's question, and Q's right? because you were there. And and here, let me add something on top of that, man. Here's the icing on the cake on that video. We had just encountered that cop. I didn't I didn't realize this before because he when he we had just encountered him on another on another cop watch. Just I would say not even 20, 30 minutes right before that video, he was sitting in his car. We walked up and uh, he some guy had homeless guy had broke a window, so he was getting ready to leave. And we walked up to his vehicle and I was like, how's it going, man? How you doing? He's all good. I was like, are you guys already all done here? He said, yeah. So we already had cameras and uh, and he was like, all right, you guys have a good day. And we're like, all right. So he already knew that we had cameras, that we were there. If I wanted to hurt him, I could have easily walked up to the window and done something to him with the weapon instead of a camera. Right. Um, and he so like he he already knew that we had cameras in our hands. He had just seen us uh, minutes before that. And at this point, it was just cowardice. Like I say, you know, how, how often times do you hear this? We just want to go home at the end of the day. That cop said that, you know, um, but you never hear. Don't pick a dangerous job. Don't pick yeah, a dangerous right? job. That's and like me saying boxing. You know, I just, I just don't want to get knocked out. Well, don't box. <laughs> don't box, bro. It's going to inevitably happen at some point. Right. You know? I mean, you stay in it long enough, man. You know, you never hear a cop really talk about, man, I can't wait to put my life on the line today for someone. You know, that's what heroism truly is about. You always hear officer safety, but you never hear about uh, public safety. And this is something that that is is undoubtedly true. Now, explain explain the next video that I'm about to show here. Um, this video is uh, we walk into a place like a uh, city council chambers. And uh, every city hall has a city council chambers. And uh, right away, this guy gets bothered. It's a creepy looking dude. He gets bothered because we have a camera there. And uh, but there is the supervisor that's there. He actually walks up and he has an amazing conversation with us. Very educational. And uh, I, I, I really like this video just because of the educational value I believe it brings. It's open to the public, right? For what? Huh? For what? what do you mean for what? No, this is open to the public, right? There's no meeting is what I mean. Yeah, but this is open to the public though, right? When there's a meeting. But it's not open to the public right now? No. There's no meeting right now. But the door's not locked and there's no sign that it's closed. Because there was a meeting earlier. We had we had a run through for a meeting that's taking place on the front door. But there's no restriction. On there. Take a seat now. Don't you see I'm already sitting? Then relax and enjoy yourself. I think maybe you need to relax. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, What's your name? It's kind of humorous, bro. It is, dude. Didn't you address the public? Now you're quiet. <laughs> hmm. if, if you're looking to get me on camera, you're welcome to. But uh, I'm not interested. Who is this guy? I guess he's just working in there, man. I don't even know who he is. <laughs> who is this guy? I mean, he's just. <laughs> you already did in Iraq. What are you talking about? I'm not at a window to, to, right now, so I'm not working. Just relax, bro. Don't get dense. There's gonna be thousands, hundreds of thousands soon enough. What's your name, man? He looks like a 1980s heavy metal roadie, ex roadie. <laughs> <laughs> guys with cameras that's why i use one myself yeah you're gonna get your camera what happened i think this guy's unstable folks 
<laughs> the supervisor comes out right now and just he's he's amazing, man. You sir, you addressed me. Can I get your name? Mm. Doesn't he have to give you his name? Or is that not something he has to address if, the public? If they address you, they're supposed to identify you. Okay. And uh have an authoritative demeanor. But then when the public asks questions, they shut down. And they act all weird. They're closed already. These people are unstable, folks. <laughs> I will not address the ladies over here on the right, for they did not address me. They weren't rude to me or anything like that. So there's no need to address them. I just wanted to come in here and look around really quick, uh, you know, and let you guys know, you know, where this place is. You guys can come in here. As you guys know, you guys always support the work we do. And uh, these are the type of people that, these are the people we, we pay. And uh, this is, howdy. Not too bad, how you doing today? So this is the guy that you that was impressive. Yeah, he's good, man. He's he's a good dude. You could tell. Like he's actually been there a long time. He respected us. He actually knew my channel because of my voice, and uh, he's just he. If you keep watching, you're gonna really like the, his demeanor. And... Can I help you guys with something? Oh, we was just actually coming around to look around really quick. Okay. Um, we're not trying to disturb anybody. They addressed us. So they told us that we couldn't be in here, and I told them, well, it's not open, it's not closed. You know, it's not restricted. It normally is, but we've been keeping it because we've been going in and out. Uh, I, I, I go all up and down uh, California. Um, I also, uh, we talk to a lot of other folks that do this as well. And so we know some of the some of the rules and the laws and stuff like yeah. that. So we sometimes we go out and challenge, you know. Yeah. I try to do it respectfully. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes... How, how long do you plan on being in here? Nice camera, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Um, actually, I was gonna come in here and sit down for about five seconds. If nobody addressed me, I was gonna get up and walk away. Yeah, no, you're. But thank you. If, I just need to know how long you're gonna be here for. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Well, um, I'll probably I'll probably get out of your hair here in a second. Um, I just these. You can, you can sit. All, you can sit for a while. I just need to know. For sure. Yeah. You mind if I ask who you are? I, I'm Roy Henderson. So I I run. I manage. This is Ripco TV. Uh, two of our interns, and uh, I've been I've been here for about 17 years. Okay. So this is kind of my office. So Let's do you ahead. work for the county? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so basically, what I do, man, and I'm not going to jive you. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the table for you guys. Okay. All right, and you don't want to be jived. I, you're you're very uh, cordial, by the way. And I appreciate that. Um, You've probably seen some of your videos online. Does my voice sound familiar? I, I, yeah. <laughs> I love you guys going libraries and, and, and I, public properties and stuff like that. That's crazy, dude. You're making a big difference, man. Yeah, some of these public oh. officials actually know us. I, 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 I don't like to do private businesses. Oh, okay. Some channels do that. I personally don't like to do that. I like to keep the original premise of a First Amendment audit okay. and hold public officials accountable. Say. Yeah, First Amendment audit. Right. Okay. And so one of the things that my channel has discovered is that a lot of public officials, a lot of police officers, kids in school, myself included, many folks, my parents, nobody seems to know the First Amendment or the Constitution. And we wonder why we have problems out there in the streets. The cops don't know it, the kids don't know it, and there is a disconnect, right? I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to find that disconnect. Every law enforcement officer that I encounter don't seem to know it. They stumble upon it. And I ask respectfully and they answer respectfully, but this is what I want to get rid of. And you don't have to answer, but I will ask you. Yeah. Do you know what the First Amendment is? The majority of it, yeah, yeah. There's five parts to it. So. What, what's your channel? Because I swear I've, I've seen you. What, what is your channel? Oh, man. Yeah, let's finish this okay, question yeah, first, and, and, then, yeah. and then I'll give it to you. Because I, I swear I've seen maybe you or somebody else educate. <laughs> you haven't been inside of a library? I probably have in the past. I don't do. I don't like to do libraries just because like, it's really quiet. And, 
you know, I, I don't like to stir stuff. I like to have a dialogue. Yeah, with folks. yeah, yeah. No, the the person like yourself was yeah. in, in a library. I actually was in the I think maybe the lobby or the foyer. Maybe yeah. And they, I think they called the the security guard first, right. then the sheriff, yeah. and um, and none of them, none of them. I mean, they, they got educated that day. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's what I do. I like it myself. I mean. Awesome. I appreciate that. Um. So back to the question yeah. at hand. Do you know the First Amendment? Not as much as you okay, do. Okay, we're going to learn it today, and we're it's never going to forget yeah. it again, okay? Wow, he admitted that. He, I mean, yeah. so he didn't know. Mm -hmm. I was under the impression that you were telling me that he knew about Okay. Well, if he watched your channel enough, he wouldn't know it. Right. Freedom of speech, mm -hmm. freedom of religion, freedom of the press. That's what we do. Um, freedom to assemble. You and family and friends could gather and talk about what's wrong in government yeah. and petition the government and say, hey, stop it, right? And so it's that simple. But nobody seems to know it. And uh, one more thing I'll leave you with. Uh, a lot of times we, we, we go to court, we get arrested, and uh, cops will say, um, let the courts deal with it, or you'll have your day in court, right? These are common things yeah, we hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of times if we go to court and we speak out of turn, it's called contempt of court. Mm -hmm. We'll get charged or jailed. Oh, you do it on purpose? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. But this often happens with the people when yeah, they yeah. speak out of turn in court. But when police officers constantly violate people's rights because they don't know the First Amendment, and um, they always say these things like, let the courts deal with it. To me, that's a form of contempt of court. And it's happening over and over again. Yeah. And we're seeing it's not, it's probably not getting fixed. I went to the LAPD training facility and did an audit there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stumbled upon the whole compound. It was crazy. It was like the, a video game of Grand Theft Auto, like just going everywhere in there. Nobody stopped us. Uh -huh. I did the sheriff's training facility as well. Um, cops were called, deputies were called. And, and uh, at the LA training facility, I spoke to a sergeant. I like to call them assistant managers because sergeants are military. Too, yeah, right? yeah. Were you in the so, military? No, oh. my oldest son. Oh, okay. Cool. Marine. I was a marine. Too. Nice. Thank you uh, for serving. And um, so they did a follow-up audit that day. They called out a whole bunch of police officers. They called out the chopper and everything. It was, no it was way. crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, but we did a follow-up video, and the sergeant there was asking the gentleman that went. He was asking him for me, but he wants me to actually go back and teach a class at no, the wow. LBD training facility. Um, I don't know if I'll take up that offer. I kind of like what I do. And yeah. I like the free and the mobility of it, just the element of surprise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but Yeah, because if, I mean, if, it's, if it's planned, then they can get educated before you come, right? Yeah. And then so the, did, they, did they tell you, uh, what, do you know what happens in this room? Um, meetings. So all, all, all the meetings uh, for different types of business, the majority of the business that are county, Type businesses. So the the main board meeting is uh, board of supervisors, which is on Tuesday. We're dark this week, so we don't have anything in here on Tuesday. Um, Monday. What's a typical Monday meeting? Oh, Robert's in, uh, he's in back. So Monday is like maybe RTA, Transportation Authority, or RCTC, uh, or it's like County Transportation Authority. Tuesday is board meetings. Wednesday is planning. Uh, Thursday would be A Luck or LAFCO. So they're all different. So. A luck is air, right? Um, helicopters and planes, uh, but the board is um, so the, the board is the highest elected official. So they're like right above a mayor, right? You have all the different cities, and they have the board members. The board of supervisors um, take care of the constituents that are in unincorporated. So if you live in an area that is not a city, then they, uh, you know, uh, the ordinances and and the laws that uh, pertain to the or the rules and regulations basically for the unincorporated it is done in, in this business. So uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, before I started here, I had no idea what the Board of Supervisors was. I mean, uh, but being in this room, running the control room for a little bit over 17 years, I've learned about what the county does, all the different types. Um, I've always said, you know, the board knows what's going on in the county. The police know what's going on. The planning commissioners know what's going on. But those guys that sit in there and run every single meeting, they really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You have all the different Makes pieces sense. of the meeting right. before uh, something, you know, before a city becomes a city, it comes to LAFCO, another organization. Then you have WRCOG, another bigger organization. But uh, wow. they're all, it's typically city council people or mayors and then the board of supervisors that comprise all those meetings. But Damn. yeah, I urge you if you're in the area, I need next to get your personal days, number, man, and, yeah, and learn a lot yeah, from yeah, you yeah, or something. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm going to give you my card, and uh, I really do appreciate you, man. No problem. And uh, I, I make mistakes along the way doing what I do, and I try to 
um, improve and not repeat mistakes. You know, so. what would be good too is um, so uh, I, I think you need the Citizens Academy. I think you have to be part of the class. Um, I think this other one is maybe it's a two or three month thing, but I think it'd be a good opportunity for you to so the DA puts it on. You know. Looking at this, I, I can't help but wonder how would he act towards you if he wasn't being recorded? A lot of these people, how would right. they how would they act towards you if they were not being videotaped? I mean, they get on their the, the one thing about the videotape recording these people, they get on their best behavior. That's what I'm noticing. Sometimes, sometimes they get on their worst. <laughs> yeah, the, the DA, probation, uh, the probation director, or whatever, and um, the sheriff were all here, and they give their pieces of their pie of what they, you know, what they feel is going on. Um, yeah, but they're, um, I mean, the, the, I don't know if you about, know about our elected officials. I mean, think there's nothing in here um, Chad Bianco, the sheriff, and Mike Hesherin, I mean, they're, I, I love the dudes. They're, they're, they're awesome. I mean, they're, they stand for good stuff. Um, I, I enjoy working with leaders like that here. So. Man, yeah, I it's appreciate different. you. Yeah, definitely. I got to say, here on like, Tuesday. come on Tuesday. You came out and saved the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try to inform like you, right? Heck, heck yeah. I appreciate uh, yeah, you. It's super, super, super cool. I mean, a lot of stuff. It's probably one of the biggest boardrooms in, in all, probably all the counties. And uh, maybe yeah. LA's is bigger. I don't think so, though. Is, um, is it common for, is it common for, for instance, the board members or the folks back there working to grab their personal phones or cameras and record the public? Uh, not. Not no. Here, no. This guy, he got a little weirded out because we were recording and grabbed his cameras like I could record you guys too. <laughs> Rob. I'm not going to give him such a hard time, but. <laughs> he, it's a, so he's not, he works for me. None of that. Okay. Um, but yeah, they don't. Uh... I, I'm going to recommend a channel to you. I don't, I don't think so. I'm going to recommend a channel to you. Okay. There's a channel called Jersey Watcher. Jersey Watcher? Yeah, his name's Crystal. Okay. Um, he I'm goes right into right board now. meetings. In county board meetings? Yeah, or he's in, council? in New Jersey. Oh, Middle, does he? Middlesex County. And uh, he goes in there and he, he, like, he does so much research. He uncovers some of the things that they do. And it's hilarious because the guy that's running for mayor, he, he made a campaign in an ad and he's like, we're going to build schools. We're going to build a school right here on this property. And then Jersey Watcher goes out and realizes that the, the property that he stood in front of to get money for the school or to, to, for the votes. Yeah. It's contaminated property. No way. And so he's like calling him. He goes to the board meetings, he calls them out for all the stuff that they do. That's and awesome. What's it, what's it called again? Jersey Watcher. Jersey Watcher. Yeah, you're going to like this dude. Yeah, I know. Shout out to you, Jersey Watcher, Crystal. Yeah, Much I, love, always, bro. I, I do. I, I, I love channels like that. <laughs> well, yeah, man, I, and it should be. I mean, we are. Uh, nobody's perfect, but definitely. We appreciate your time. Definitely no, appreciate no you, man. I appreciate so, you. So, where are you guys from? I live in Bakersfield, oh, Kern okay. County. Yeah. But you guys up there too? Yeah. That's a long, long, long drive. drive. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where's your destination? Where? Well, I mean, I'm gonna stop it there, but that's pretty impressive. Thank you, bro. What well, you know, real quick, recording police. One of the first instances that we've seen it was the Rodney King beating. <clears throat> Then you started having a lot of channels going out in the streets and recording cops. I believe that's like level one stuff, right? Beginning to understand that we have the freedom of press. And then First Amendment audits came about and it just exploded. I was one of the first channels out there that started doing this. There was only a handful of channels that were doing this before me. Now we have channels everywhere from Sea to Shining Sea, everywhere in between, across the pond to our friends in the UK. Canada, Australia, and other places. So this as well. this is caught fire. It exploded, yes. And, and you were one of the first. You were the you were very one of the first. One of the first ones, yeah. And uh, he, here's the thing, man. I've seen that like some of the uh, channels before me, they kind of wanted to, I would say, corner the market and not really help smaller channels grow. And I realized that I'm us, per, a handful of people, we're not going to create the change that we need. We need to encourage people and empower people to get out there and record and hold their government officials accountable in their areas. And so I started helping other channels grow as well. And uh, I was told, oh, don't do it. Don't share videos. They're going to take all your views. And I'm like, I never did this for views, man. I never did this for, for that. It was always, an, I always wanted to bring education to this. I wanted to empower people. I wanted to educate them and teach them that they can do this as well.
you know, the channel that I mentioned in their Jersey Watcher. I believe that cop watching in the streets is level one. First Amendment audits going into these government installations paid for by tax dollars asking questions, where is our money? Level two. Now we need to be in city council meetings, level three type stuff. That's why I give a shout out to Jersey Watcher because he's going in there. He's demanding, where's our contracts going? Where's all the misappropriation of funds happening? You know, it's like a monopoly. It's it's um they wow. they have their friends, they have everybody. They, that's how they control, you know, there's nepotism going on. Um, you know, and and uh I believe that's the so next is that the next the next step for you? Are you doing that now? I haven't done it myself personally, even you though you gotta start it, dude. You gotta start I the know. trend. I know, I know, I know. do it, man. Yeah, but one of the things I, I do is uh, it, lately I've been highlighting channels and videos that actually do go in there and challenge. Don't get lazy, things. homie. Don't get lazy. I know. Well, I, I get up and work every day, kind of like you, man. We're always posting. Know, we're, but... always, we're always working. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I've seen is uh, also we attorneys and lawyers, they're not intelligent aliens. They are people, too. We live in the age of information. We should be learning the language of the courts. That's how they get us, you know? And there is a channel called The Angry Vet. I gave him a shout out last time on your channel. Here's another one. The dude just got ripped off by his attorney, $19,000, because that attorney is in bed with the public defense, I mean, the, uh, the, 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 the prosecutor, the judges, and just kind of took as much money out of him and then later on recused himself. And uh, that, that attorney knew that they had already made an uh, angry vet an offer. And the, the attorney didn't tell him that there was an offer on the table for him. He just told him, oh, you're going to, you know, you're going to be looking at some prison time. You know, we need more money. Bam, bam, bam. So you got every as much as possible as you could get out of him. Then he recused himself. So attorneys are taking advantage of people. Cops are violating people's rights. The people really can't afford this. The system is designed for the people to not really know and understand the law, their rights and stuff like that. But we need to take it to the next level, not just city council meetings, but we need to start learning how to fight our cases pro se. We need to learn the language of the courts and start helping each other. Like I said, we live in the age of information. This community grew uh, and we're teaching each other our rights. Why not start teaching each other the law as well? You know, the language of the courts, like I said, uh, Black's Law Dictionary, we should all have one. We should. I need to know, get for, that, man. You're you're inspiring me because I don't know dick about this stuff, right? Like, just for instance, terminology means a lot. We're really not supposed to call ourselves citizens or even a person. We're supposed to call ourselves one of the people, right? I, that's why I say it a lot. I'm only one of the people, and uh, even though my channel has grown, I'm probably one of the biggest auditing channels. There have been other channels that have grown and have passed my channel up and stuff like that. Um, but even though I'm still one of the bigger channels that that kept growing, um, I'm still I'm 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 an underdog, man. I feel like uh, I'm not as smart as I would like to be. Uh, I I there's, there's certain things I don't know. Jersey Watcher has taught us some things. They tried to kick him out of city council meetings, and he brings up court case laws, uh, Supreme Court case laws like Lozman versus Riviera. You know, letting them know you can't do this to us, and. Uh, and it's just but this is going to catch fire especially now in america people are going to jump on board of this and start, start taking the matter into their own hands because we have no choice at this point everyone's right. being fought with lawfare man that's how that's how they're getting everybody like you just said lawfare is a real thing that's really happening that's mm -hmm. what's taking everybody down that's, that's right. why they're going after all these powerful men with the mt movement i can't say the the word but but uh that movement there it's been every movement's been weaponized for this reason yeah, and uh, I'm glad you said that word weaponized because police are being weaponized against the people. Hence the word Karen, right? Karen's yeah. call police on people because they don't, there is an undesirable in the area or whatnot. You know, then we have uh, people swatting other people, you know, yeah. weaponizing police against, you know, against folks. There is a guy named Mike Stack who's actually a, a real supporter of mine. He's actually the guy who found. Yeah, he was swatted the very next day. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of these things happening. In California, there was a uh, uh, a law that came out, SB 1421. And in California, you're, we're supposed to be able to um, get 
uh, information of cops, you know, cops that have been reprimanded for certain things. We're supposed to get these files. In my county where I live, Kern County, the county has filed suit against that law uh, so that they won't have to give up these body cams to the people. You know, why are we advocating for body cams if we can't even get it most of the time, you know, and it's redacted a lot of times. So that's why I say things like, you know, we should be out there recording and documenting these things because I did talk to a a, a, a prosecutor one time. He's concerned about me out there recording and uh, he kept giving me reasons of why, you know, it's important for, you know, cops to have body cams. And I'm like, I don't disagree with you, man. I agree with you. Cops should have body cams, but we, the people should also have our own cameras handy. We have our phones, man. A lot of people don't know this, but in your phone right here, you have over two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars worth of recording equipment. 10, 20 years ago, that's what you would pay in order to get the type of technology wow. that we have in our phones no right kidding, now. dude. So we should be able to use our phones. <clears throat> you can get editing software and you could do everything. Wow. You can run a whole YouTube channel. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can film a movie from your phone now, dude. Yeah. yeah like, you that's, can. Way, that's where we're at. Yeah, and we're all we're all members of the press. Um, freedom of press, you know, a lot of people think you need credentials. A lot of <clears throat> public officials, cops, they've asked us, Oh, you're a member of the press, huh? Where's your credentials? Let me see your press pass. Just wait a, a minute, man. You don't need a press pass like you don't need a religion pass to go to church. Freedom of the press is part of your First Amendment, right? Just like freedom of speech, freedom to assemble. That's how we're able to go to church, you know, not breaking the law, you know, peacefully assemble. And when we assemble, like I was telling the gentleman, uh, we realize something's wrong in government, then we can petition our government. And uh, it's it's just, I think, man, this this whole thing of people knowing and understanding is right, our rights as a people is a beautiful thing. It's it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, you know. And uh, I think this is something that all sides can agree on. Everyone can agree on. Doesn't matter what color you are, what nationality or race you are. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight, black or white, young or old. Uh, we the people have. You know, we, we need to coexist in this country, right? We need to learn how to not only respect other folks, respect our rights, but respect other people's rights, too. And it's just it's a beautiful thing, man. And my my goal, hopefully before I'm dead and gone, you know, we can actually have cops learn and know the oath that they swear to. That is that is one of the most important things, I believe. And, uh, you know, hold them accountable. Keep this. They have an umbrella of protection, man. Qualified immunity, internal investigations, police unions. And for some reason, well, if we hold a cop accountable and a cop gets sued, the taxpayers are still forking that bill. How does that work, man? How does that? How is that a sustainable system? It doesn't make any sense to me. That's why cops have this attitude. <laughs> yeah, you know, make a complaint. Reason, Go make another, a complaint. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and that's another reason I brought up their age range because I know how I was in my twenties and early thirties. You know, these guys are full of testosterone and adrenaline, and they just want to prove themselves and. They have that mindset of just like a bouncer mindset. You know, there was, there was always, when I was bouncing back in the day, there was always those bouncers, man, that just got the job just because they wanted to have authority and they just wanted to beat people up and they wanted to have the, 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 they wanted to get the girls and they wanted to throw people out and they wanted to say no to people. It's, it's, it's a, it's a chip on their shoulder, man. And, and I, unfortunately, a lot of cops have that too. That's why they get into it. It's, yeah. It's very rare you see a guy over thirty five that's a cop, man. And if you and if you do, most of them are bitter and pissed off. You know, like it's just the way it is. Let's just look at it realistically. You know, it's it's the way it is. That's why I brought up the age range. You know, so, do you agree with me on that? I absolutely agree with you. You know, uh, there's retired cops, man, that watch my channel religiously. These guys reach out to me. You know, I've 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 talked I've spoken to cops that are on the force. Uh, cops that are off the force now. Um, there's another channel. Shout out to Abaya Israel from We the People University. This guy's channel passed mine. He's he's a good dude. Um, this guy was a cop. He wrote a book. Oh, where's that book at? Let me grab that for you real quick. Okay. Well, I like the chair. Shout out. Shout out. Let me. Did I turn my thing off? No, I can hear you. Okay. Shout out to Abaya Israel, We the People University. You guys can actually find this book on my channel, on my link. You guys can pick it up if you like. He was a cop, okay? And uh, there was a lot of things that he encountered in the training, uh, the years on the force. And I've, I've gotten this from other cops. 
there's like a there's like a, a kind of a club right an unofficial club when you become a cop you guys hang out sometimes you guys cops go to the bars after afterwards there was another cop that i used to talk to i'm not gonna say his name we'll just call him john um he was out of the new jersey area this guy he he retired early because he was injured his father died hating who he became he didn't talk to his father no more he started cheating on his wife because he started following the trend of other cops going to the bars, cheating on their wives. Um, he was cheating on his wife with a badge bunny, uh, a, a woman who likes to date cops. As a soon badge as he, bunny? That's what she, they're called? That's what, what they call him. Yeah, that's what he called her. <laughs> and now badge bunnies, wow. So she, she was with him until he left his wife and kids. And um, after he left his wife and kids, the girl left him for another cop. And uh, he ended up losing his family. His father passed away, hating who he became. Um, and the guy cried to me for over an hour on the phone. And, you know, I was very patient. I listened to him and everything. But it made me understand a lot of things. Abaya Israel didn't take that route. This man ended up quitting. Um he didn't cheat on his wife. He didn't join that club. He still has his wife. He still has his kids. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to him and you, David, and everybody watching. Happy holidays. He's going to have an amazing Christmas with his family. A good man. He just, in his heart, it just, it, he didn't, he couldn't survive in that environment. He didn't want to be there. He didn't want to become that, that person. Uh, another cop that I told you in, in one of my videos, I kind of cussed her out a long time ago. Um, when I was first starting out, um, she no, she's no longer a cop. You know, one of the things she said was, as a female cop, you're expected to sleep around. If you if you don't, then you know you're just not going to be a part of that club. And uh, yeah. you know, she's writing a book and she's working with us now. She we've hired her to do some script writing, to do some narrating. She swears a lot. You know, some people love it, a couple people don't. I love it. Um, <laughs> but you know it's it's an environment that we're beginning to understand these patterns just like i started asking cops if they knew the oath they, they swore to and they don't know it i begin to understand some patterns you know i see things in patterns sometimes and uh you know what what will change these these patterns what will change the environment it's cops people standing up for themselves you know if you become a cop and you're only being trained in brute force and compliance and you're not they're not teaching you um what the people's natural rights are your training officers, your the police departments, they are actually putting cops in a dangerous position because a lot of people know that you don't have to give up your name in certain if you're not committing a crime, if the cops don't have reasonable articulable suspicion or a reasonable articulable fact to actually put you in cuffs. If you know these things, a lot of people know they don't have to give up. They, when you say articulable, that means they'd have to explain it, correct? Right. So that's a key they, word right there. Right, right. Reasonable and articulable facts. Right. And these are explain these facts to you. Right. These are terminologies that cops know the people really don't know. And uh, and that's why cops laugh at the people. Oh, you think you know your rights? You must be some kind of what sovereign citizen. Just give up your name. We see it all the time. The the the, the videos don't lie. There's hundreds of them out there. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not anti-cop and I never wanted to approach this, you know, being anti-cop. Um. So I know that the cops do a good job out there as well. They catch criminals, people that have been, that murdered somebody or something. We see the first 48, a lot of these shows, but there are also bad cops. That's why I said earlier in the show that, you know, I think detectives do a good job. You know, sometimes they catch people. And at the same time, you'll watch any episode of Cold Case Files that you'll turn on and watch. You'll hear a family member or somebody talk about police incompetence. This person got away because of this. We They, they had the all the all the uh, evidence against this guy but they didn't do the job correctly so this guy got away for 20 years and um you know but it's it's kind of a culture that you see man i think these patterns don't lie and and uh now we have because of my channel we have people reaching out talking to me explaining their 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 uh, experiences in law enforcement and um well how many channels i mean if you had to estimate how many channels are out there now how many from when you first started to now Man, like I said, when I started, there was only a handful of channels out there. I would say, man, there's probably just in the United States alone, there has to be at least a thousand channels. Wow. There. 
And when you started, there was like just a dozen, maybe less. Not even, bro. Maybe like five or six channels. I was one of the first ones. I remember. So when I interviewed you, were you still in the handful? No, no. When you interviewed me, I would say there was hundreds of channels. Um, Now we're, I would say we're nearing a thousand, if not more. Um, There is just channels everywhere. In every city now, you'll see a new channel popping up. Um, Corruption. And, And I'll say this. It isn't us that's starting these channels. It's the corruption that they see. Police messing with somebody unlawfully arrested we're i have videos that are being sent to me every single day i get about 100 emails about a good 10 percent of those have videos have stories of cops violating their rights brutalizing people and doing these things and it's just and you're like you said a lot of them are young cops who think that they're all tatted up and i got nothing against tattoos i got a bunch of them myself but you know these you see like la muerte or some you know some like you know, evil tattoos on these guys. It's just like, what 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 kind of people are we hiring? You know, I, I understand that a lot of people don't want to become cops anymore. And are we just hiring like really bad people well, now? There's, to become there's cops? a lot of rumors out there that are going on right now that the, the, the immigrants coming over are being hired. Yes, that's going to ha- That's been they happening. They have no man. loyalty to our constitution. No loyalty, no knowledge, no understanding of it. I mean, so that, that's cops- another reason, folks, you need to get out there and do this and hold these people accountable because are you hearing the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They're trying to take away, you know, your uh, used to have to be born in America or at least have citizenship. They're taking that away as well. And I got nothing against people, man. Like I love all people. You know what I mean? I, I, I respect people's cultures. I don't like racism in any kind of way from one side to the other, from this side to that side. I don't like none of that stuff, man. I believe we need to learn each other's, you know, uh, maybe we don't have to, but man, I love food from all kinds of places, man. I love people, you know, I, I just love accents. I just love people, bro. And, uh, but at the same time, I do believe that we need to have some standards here. We need to stop taking away these, these restrictions on not take away restrictions, but, um, to, to, to allow people that don't even have citizenship to become cops and enforce Un- Yeah, unvetted everything. Yeah, it's crazy. But this what is all hell's... this is all by design, and I'll go into that in another video. Absol- absolutely, I, mean, all, I agree. You I know, agree. all by design. But but I uh, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and call it here, man. I got another uh, podcast I have to jump onto. But David Villa, via San Joaquin Valley, folks, go give his channel a follow. And this is incredible work he's doing. I'm behind you 100, percent bro. I am. You, I love the police force. I, I back the. I back the blue. But listen, you got to draw a line on how far you back because, right. in my opinion, everyone needs to know the amendments. Everyone needs to know the Constitution. They need to know the oath they swear to. And you're doing a fabulous job. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you for coming on my channel, man. And I hopefully you absorb some of my followers and they start following you. Absolutely, bro. And I'm definitely going to put this on my channel as well. Um, last time we had you, we had this uh, video. Nothing but positive comments on both sides. My my people, that, my supporters, and your supporters, they loved us both, man. They loved the interview, and I love your work, man. I, I sometimes I get a chance to sit there and watch and just hang out, and I'm like, you're, you're, you're policing the police. I'm police. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I love it, bro. It has to be done. Your your work is just as important as mine. My work is just as important as yours, and. Like I said, man, you're an amazing, you're an amazing man. And uh, thank you. you happy too. holidays to you. Yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas, bro. Happy Thanksgiving. Me tocayo. Love you, David. Love you. Tocayo. Love you thank too, you, man. Bro. Take it easy, homie.